Hello Open Door. Today we are starting a new devotional series on the I Am Sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John. These are a collection of se seven sayings and they each reveal something about Jesus, who he was and what he came to do. Early in John's Gospel, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus uses the name God had given himself when talking to Moses in Exodus, that of I am. Um, and by doing this, Jesus is revealing that he is one with God. Following that statement, John records seven sayings that Jesus declares um, something about himself by saying I am. And today we're going to be looking at the first of these, which is recorded in John 6. And that's where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. At first, this sounds strange. Why is Jesus comparing himself to bread? And what does it mean that Jesus is the bread of life? Well, as with everything in the Bible, the context that Jesus says this in is really important because that helps us to understand why Jesus has used this image of bread. So I'm going to give you a quick backstory and then we'll get into why Jesus saying I am the bread of life is so amazing. In John um, chapter 5, I think it is, Jesus feeds the 5,000. If you don't know the account, Jesus is teaching um, a group of 5,000 men, women and children. The day draws on and they've had nothing to eat. Jesus turns to his disciples and asks them to provide food for the crowd. The disciples are dumbfounded. They point out that it will cost them a year's wages to feed the crowd at least and that the nearest town is quite a way away. They tell Jesus his best option is to send the crowd home, but Jesus has other ideas. There's a small boy in the crowd that has five loaves and two fish. Jesus takes his food, gives thanks, and tells his disciples to distribute it among the crowd. I think that's pretty amazing that the disciples obey, because as far as we know, it still looked like they only had five loaves and two fish, and this was a crowd of 5,000 people. But obey they did, and miraculously, all 5,000 men, plus the women and children, were fed, and the disciples collected 12 baskets of broken pieces. The next day, the crowd that had... Um, been listening to Jesus the day before and had eaten the loaves and the fish, um, go to find him. He turns to them and tells them that the reason they're seeking him is because they'd eaten their fill the day before. Jesus had provided for their physical needs. They were amazed and they wanted more of the same. But Jesus tells them that if they are looking if that's what they're looking for, then they've missed the point. The feeding of the 5,000 met an immediate physical need, but there was more to it than that. It was a sign that pointed to something greater. Jesus tells them that they can have eternal life if they believe in the one whom God had sent. Now we know that's Jesus, but they didn't get it. After all they had heard and witnessed the day before, guess what they do? They ask for a sign. And then they tell Jesus, as if he didn't know, that God had sent manna to feed their ancestors in the desert. And they tell him that when the Messiah comes, God will provide manna again. They're looking for something material. And I think Jesus is incredibly patient with them because he takes what they say about the manna and he teaches them that this was also a sign, revealing something of God's character and intention towards humanity. But they still don't understand. And knowing this, Jesus tells them plainly that he is the bread that they're looking for. 
I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. They were looking for something physical, something they could touch and taste, something that would satisfy their physical hunger. And Jesus had actually given it to them the day before, but they didn't notice, they didn't recognise it. Um, and in coming to Jesus the next day and asking for basically the same thing, Jesus tells them they're looking in the wrong place. They're looking for the wrong thing. Material things can only satisfy to a certain extent. You have a meal and that satisfies your hunger for a few hours, but soon you need something else to eat. Jesus declares in saying I'm the bread of life that we need more than physical things to satisfy us. We have a deeper hunger, an emotional and spiritual hunger that only he can satisfy. Elsewhere in the Bible it says man cannot live on bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yet we turn to material things all the time thinking they will make us happy, give us joy, remove the sadness that's in us. You can see that in the crowds of people queuing um, to access the shops that have opened, the clothing and the furniture shops. You can see it um, when we eat to distract ourselves from stress, worry, sadness, or when people seek sexual gratification or the praise of others um, when we post witty statuses on Facebook or cute pictures on Instagram. There are many ways we try to fill the hole inside of us that desires more, that desires to be loved, that desires joy and freedom from sadness, anxiety, shame, that desires to know that we are known, loved and accepted. Jesus here speaks right to that need. He says, you came looking for me because I fed your physical hunger and now you're hungry again, but it's not physical bread that you need. You'll always end up feeling empty if you look to the material things to fill your lack. You need something that will satisfy you for eternity. That something is a person and that person is me because I am the bread of life. I will nourish you, I will satisfy you, I will give you joy. You can cast all your burdens on me. You can know freedom from fear, guilt, shame and worry. You can know that you are deeply loved, forgiven and accepted. I meet and fill the deepest desires of the human heart. Believe in me and I will fill that hole inside of you eternally. This is such good news for the world. People are constantly looking for things to fill the void. But as Christians we also need to be reminded of this because it is so easy to get caught up in our consumerist culture and reduce what Jesus offers to merely providing for our material needs. That misses the mark totally. We need to remind ourselves that Jesus is the one who promises to fill our lives abundantly with his presence, his peace, his joy, his forgiveness, his love. It is so much more than material riches. It's about filling our deepest desire to know and be known by the Father. In declaring, I am the bread of life, Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Jesus is saying that he is the only one who can fill our deepest and most basic longings.